Hello and welcome to HappilyEducated.com. As I mentioned in my last post, the overall goal of my dissertation was to understand how social relationships influence musical development. I used qualitative methods to do this, and basically what that means is that I didn't have a lot of participants in my study, but I examined the experience of each one in great detail. Quantitative studies, on the other hand, typically include many, 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 many participants, but gather less detailed data about each one. So whereas quantitative studies are appropriate for addressing what, where, and when questions, qualitative studies look at why and how things happen as well. So I wanted to know why and how musical development occurs. My study was structured as a collective case study, and the unit of analysis was a musician's social network. So what this means is that I compared uh, the social networks of five musicians. Each network was considered to be a, a separate case and I looked at one case in a time. So I finished up one, then moved on to the next, then the next, then the next. Um, the participants in my study were five young musicians, ages 16 to 18, and three to four of each of their musically influential social partners. The musicians each represented a specific genre of music, namely uh, classical, rap, um, musical theater, jazz, and rock. Uh, and these participants were selected for participation in the study based on nominations from adult leaders in their musical communities, based on their exceptional levels of performance. So these were highly accomplished young musicians. Um, now let's see, the other participants were selected by the musicians themselves based primarily on how significantly or how strongly they had influenced the musician's development. And these people were mainly uh, parents, teachers, and friends of some sort or another. Now, my data collection process began with an observation of each musician's musical activities. And in every case, this ended up being a performance, though it didn't have to be. And I then asked each musician to put together a list of musical works for me that had been in somehow, some way influential or significant or important to their development or that were just their favorites um, for me to listen to to help get acclimated to their musical world or just to get an initial sense of their musical practices and preferences. Uh, we then moved on to a series of three interviews with each musician, the first of which was mainly focused on getting sort of an overall biographical sketch of that musician from first musical memory through to future goals. And uh, we also discussed the musician's non-musical interests and activities as well. And from that interview, from the transcription of that interview, I pulled out the names of pretty much anyone who the musician had mentioned to use as a starting point for our second interview during which we constructed participant-aided sociograms. And that's what you see right behind me here. So a participant-aided sociogram is a graphic representation of a person's social network that that person creates for him or herself. And the point here is not to get a 100% accurate social network diagram, but rather to generate conversation and thought and self-reflection on how that person had become the musician they are and who had played a role in that process. Um, I also was really very interested in the musician's perspective on how they became the musician they are. And so this, this process helped to bring out those ideas, basically. Um, so let's see. If you give me just a moment, I will get resituated to show you a bit of my uh, sociogram and show you how this works. So just excuse me for one second. Okay, I'm not sure how clearly you can see this. Um, hopefully you can't see all the individual names because I don't really want you to know all the gory details of who was involved in my development. But basically what this is, as you can see, it's very low tech, right? I've just got a piece of poster board, some little post-it notes, and we had some markers and some pencils and that sort of thing. That's all you needed to put this together. In the middle is me. That says Abby right there, just in case you can't read it. And we've got, moving out from me, these three concentric circles, okay? Going from smaller to bigger. And basically what it is, is the people who have tags right here in the inner circle are the people who influenced my musical development very strongly. Okay, so for example, there's my mom right there. If it were not for my mother, uh, I would not be playing the cello. Uh, it was all her doing, pretty much, that I played the cello. And, of course, she supported me in a million different other ways as well in terms of my musical growth. 
Moving out from there, I have people who were less influential, but still influential. And on the outermost circle are people who, yeah, they played some kind of role, but not nearly as significant. So the different colors of the tags, I selected those based on, you know, my personal, what seemed appropriate, as did my participants. But they represent the time in my life when these people were significant. So the, the pink tags here are my lifelong influences. The purple tags are my childhood influences. Blue, adolescence, and the yellow is adulthood. So that is just to give some sense of the chrono chronology of who played a role when. Um, so of course, family members being um, significant throughout my life, but these two kids who I knew when I was younger but have not talked to or seen since, um, they were just influential in my childhood, for example. Okay, then what else do you need to know? Um, people are grouped on this sociogram not only in terms of their relationship to me, but also in terms of their relationship to each other. So for example, these three people right here were all friends of mine from Interlochen. So not only did I know them, but they knew each other. So they are right next to each other. These two people right here were brother and sister. So they're right next to each other. Um, now, of course, it's not, you know, 100% accurate who knows who and how we're all situated, but you do the best you can when you're putting together something like this. Um, let's see, what else do I need to say? Uh, the big loop-de-loop -loop sort of circle-y shapes around those, I don't even know if you can really see them, those represent some other kind of categorization. Uh, and again, this was I chose my own categories based on what seemed appropriate. My participants chose their own categories based on what seemed appropriate for them. Um, there was no sort of predictated type of categories. But I have, for example, um, a big old teacher group right here. These are all teachers who I worked with. I have a peer group, also quite, 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 quite large. Okay. Um, family, just my parents are in there. Oddly enough, you might be surprised, I have a love interests category because for me, ooh, boys were a major motivator of my musical development. In fact, I got my first kiss at music camp, which really made me want to go back to music camp the following year. So boys were a big deal, love interests, and then I also have my failed relationships category. And something worth pointing out specifically about those, but it applies elsewhere, that not all the people who are on here were directly related to my music making. I didn't necessarily make music with all these people or they were not all musicians. These two, for example, my best friend from, you know, uh, middle school, basically, elementary school. Um, she's in the failed relationships category because if we had not stopped being friends, she just sort of randomly stopped talking to me one day. I still don't really know why. Um, if she had not stopped being my friend, I probably would not have wanted to go to Interlochen. Uh, so even though we didn't do musical things together, she wasn't a musician, she still contributed hugely to my musical development because she sort of put me, helped me move down the path toward becoming more serious about music. Similarly, an ex-boyfriend here, um, if we had not broken up, I probably would be living in Spain right now. But we did break up. So I went back to grad school, got a doctorate, pretty major in terms of my musical development, even though we didn't do musical things together. Also important to point out is not on my uh, sociogram, but on some of my participants' sociograms, they chose to include parasocial relationships. And if you don't know what that is, you might check out my post from several, several months ago about parasocial relationships. But basically, that's just um, a one-sided relationship with someone who probably a famous person um, but who you know who they are, but they don't know who you are. But you are able in some way to gather information about that. So I don't have any of those because I've never really been a huge fan of anyone famous, weirdly enough. Um, but some of my participants were very, very strongly influenced by famous musicians. So they chose to include those. All right, so I think that's all I need to tell you about that. Let me get the camera resituated again. Excuse me. So at the end of the second interview, the musician and I decided together who of his or her influential social partners I should interview. Uh, and we chose people mainly based on how significantly they had influenced the musician's development and on their availability to be interviewed. 
So for example, my rock musician um, said the Beatles were very influential in his development, but of course I could not interview the Beatles. So in every case, at least one of these people ended up being a parent, though there was no requirement that parents be included. Between the second and third interviews with the musicians, I interviewed these influential people. And the, my questions focused mainly on their personal musical backgrounds and their perspectives on how they had contributed to the young musician's development. I then interviewed the musician one final time, during which we discussed an example of his or her musical work, specifically focusing on who had contributed to making the production of that work possible. And then we also addressed any lingering questions I might have had and talked about my ongoing analysis. So I told the musician what I thought I had learned about musical development from their stories, and he or she let me know if I was completely off base or if I was interpreting things correctly. So I, uh, rather than waiting until I'd finished all the interviews to start analyzing my data, I collected and analyzed data at the same time, which is very common in this type of research. I started by transcribing all the interviews, which was a tremendously, horrendously tedious and time-consuming process. And I then used what's called grounded theory analysis to figure out what all my data meant. And I'm pretty sure that most of the viewers or readers of this blog will not be tremendously interested in the nitty gritty details of how grounded theory analysis works. So I'm kind of just going to skim over it really quickly. Basically, you name or code segments of data or you give them a label to describe what they are to represent them in some way. And then you look for commonalities among these codes to sort of coalesce them into overarching themes. These themes then become the basis of the researcher's theoretical interpretation of whatever phenomenon he or she is studying. In my case, I developed a theory of how musicians' um, developmental trajectories are constructed. And yes, I'll be talking about that theory in an upcoming post, so keep your eye out for that. So that pretty much covers my study design, um, at least the big aspects of it. And I strongly encourage you to give this sociogram uh, creation process a try for yourself, even if it's just a casual little version jotted down on a piece of paper. Because A, it's really fun. And B, it's a very cool way of sort of reflecting on how you became the person you are. A um, little bit of introspection is always good for us. So uh, give it a try. And it doesn't have to be about musical development. It could be about whatever type of development is appropriate for you maybe professional development, athletic development, spiritual development, moral development, whatever. It would all work. Um, and I guess that's all I have to say for today. So, oh no, it would also prepare you really well for my next post, which is going to be about how uh, information and resources flow through social networks. So until then, thanks so much for watching this and happy learning.